Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to the YouTube channel Plantastic. Today we are going to look into the protoplast culture. Alright, what is protoplast culture? It is also known as parasexual hybridization. Protoplast is a plant cell of the cell wall. It is also known as the naked cell, each bounded only by the plasma membrane, which is extremely fragile. It only can be healthy and survive in isotonic medium. A grain of leaf may yield about a million of protoplasts. There are three types of parasexual hybridization, which are symmetric hybridization, which is the somatic hybridization with complete genomes of both the fusion parents. The next is asymmetric hybridization. It is the combination of complete genomes of two alien parents that is neither desirable nor always stable. The third parasexual hybridization will be the cybridization. It is combining nuclear genome of one parent with mitochondria and or chloroplast genomes of another parent. The general mechanisms are as follow. First, we have to sterilize the leaf samples Isolate them with mechanical disruptions, or it can be isolated by using enzymatic degradation of their surrounding cell walls. The example of mechanical disruption is slicing of the plant tissue, which is not efficient. Therefore, enzymatic digestion is always used to digest and degrade the cell wall, whereby the efficiency of the mechanism is species dependent. What are the applications for protoplast culture? It is a great material to genetically manipulate plants by somatic hybridization and cybridization. It can be used to produce hybrids of different plant species which are not able to be obtained by crossed pollination. It is a material for transformation. They have three stages which are the protoplast isolation, genetic manipulation like protoplast fusion or gene uptake protoplast culture and followed by the regeneration of fertile plant. It may have protoclonal variation, which is simple form of genetic manipulation. The S plants are generally the leaf tissues from seedlings, which has the highest viability. Or it can be exonixtures or other S plants that without lignification. There are several factors that will affect the protoplast isolation. First, the source of the material in which it must be young and non-lignified. Secondly, enzyme treatment in which the pH and temperature are very crucial. Third will be the osmoticum in which the concentration of the sugar and sugar alcohol is playing the major role in the osmotic concentration. You may refer to our previous video in Plant Tissue Culture Playlist with the title of Media Composition. Alright, this is the general flow chart for protoplast culture. For the methods and approaches, first, it will be the protoplast isolation, which is the enzymatic treatment of primary plant tissues. The optimum incubation condition must be determined empirically, which means we need to optimize. The concentration and combination of enzymes required to release the viable protoplast are need to be optimized as well. Also, the concentration of sugar alcohols they use as osmoticum. The enzyme mixture mentioned can be the combination of pectinases, cellulases, and in some cases, hemicellulases are added at different ratio. The osmoticum is very crucial in which it must be adjusted to maintain the isolated protoplast in a spherical condition. The protoplast will exist in the spherical condition because the protoplast is the plant cell without the cell wall that maintaining their shape at rectangular shape. In some cases, like insufficient of the concentration of osmoticum, it will cause protoplast lysis. In the excess of the concentration of osmoticum, it will induce the protoplast to shrink through plasmolysis. The square packet here is the symbol for concentration. This is the illustration of the cell 
in different concentration of the osmoticum. When the cell is in the hypertonic condition, the rate of the water leaving the cell is much higher than the water entering the cell, which causes the cell to shrink. In this case, it means that the solute concentration is higher than the water concentration of the solution. Secondly, isotonic condition is an equilibrium condition whereby the rate of the water entering the cell is equal to the rate of the water leaving the cell. So, there is no net change in the water content. Whereas in hypotonic, which is high water concentration, a much higher rate of water entering the cell is observed. Therefore, it causes the protoplast to burst. In such case, it will burst because it has no cell wall. In normal plant cell, in the presence of cell wall, the plant will look turgid. Since there is no cell wall to protect the protoplast, therefore the cell is burst, which is known as the lysis. Commonly, protoplasts are isolated at 25 to 28 degrees Celsius for a short period, which is about 2 to 6 hours, or longer period, which is about 12 to 20 hours, or it can be overnight in the dark condition. Why it must be the dark condition? You may check it out in our highlighted story, which is the YouTube Q&A at our Instagram, which is plantastic underscore my. A short plasmolysis treatment is often involving with an incubation for one hour in a salt solution, for example, CPW salt, with the same osmoticum as the enzyme mixture without the wall degrading enzymes. This is to maintain the protoplast viability and reducing the extent of spontaneous protoplast fusion during the enzyme treatment. However, protoplasts of the cell of some tissues are more prone to spontaneous fusion than others, which is known as autofusion. This process involves the expansion of plasmodesmata, which resulting in coalescence of the cytoplasms of adjacent cells. After the protoplast isolation, we will proceed with the protoplast purification. After the enzyme treatment, it needs to pass the suspension through nylon or metal sheets of decreasing pore size to remove the large material. This means that first you shift it with a large pore size. After that, you shift it again with a smaller pore size. And then you shift it again with a tinier pore size. The filter solution is followed by the centrifugation to pellet the protoplast, whereby the final debris remains in the supernatant. The speed and the duration of the centrifugation may need to be determined and optimized for different protocol systems. This is the picture of showing the centrifugation tube that containing the supernatant and pellet, whereby the pellet is precipitated due to the gravity. Subsequently, the protoplast pellets are resuspended in a solution containing an osmoticum of the same concentration as that used in enzyme mixture. Centrifugation and resuspension of the pelleted protoplast may need to be repeated several times until a pure suspension of protoplast is obtained. After that, you can adjust the centrifugation into a slower speed to carry out the resuspension and centrifugation. The protoplast will form a band and meniscus of sucrose washing solution. On the other hand, other debris forms a pellet or remains suspended. The dense band of the protoplast is carefully removed from the top of the sucrose solution using a pipette. It is resuspended if necessary. The next stage is the protoplast fusion after the protoplast purification. It is to combine the genomes of two species that cannot be combined by pollination. Protoplast fusion usually is conducted with freshly isolated protoplast. It can be the PEG-induced fusion whereby the PEG is polyethylene glycol, or using protoplast electrode fusion which causes the rapid fusion that is non-toxic to the protoplast. You may use the genetic marker to detect the success of protoplast fusion. After fusing the genomes of the protoplast, we need to culture the protoplast in culture media. The nutritional requirement of the protoplast and cell suspension culture are usually similar. The media used to culture the protoplast are often based on those employed for cell culture like Murashige and Scoop medium, Genbok B5 medium, etc. However, modifications of the formulation may be needed to induce 
sustained mitotic division in protoplast-derived cells. The osmotic pressure of the culture medium is adjusted by the addition of sugars or sugar alcohols to the culture medium as isolated protoplasts because isolated protoplasts are osmotically fragile. Osmotic pressure of the culture medium is crucial to prevent lysis or plasmolysis of protoplast. Sucrose and crucose are generally employed as carbon sources and osmotic car. Protoplasts are synthesizing the new cell wall rapidly that will remove the sugars from the medium, especially during the early stage of their culture. Maltose as a carbon source may increase the frequency of plant regeneration from protoplast-derived tissues as compared to sucrose. There are several procedures or methods for culture the isolated protoplast, in which you can culture them in liquid medium, culture the protoplast in hanging drop of liquid medium. You may embed the isolated protoplast in media added with agar, agarose, or alginate, but the temperature must be below 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Or you may employ dual medium which is the liquid over semi-solid medium. The plating density and the nurse culture is usually obtained at the optimum density which is the 1.0 times 10 power of 5 to 1.0 times 10 power of 6 per milliliter. This is to ensure the cell wall regeneration and sustain mitotic division which need to be optimized from species to species. The nurse cells utilize the neutron from the culture medium and the dividing cells or protoplasts are also released to grow particularly amino acids into the culture medium which contributing the nurse effect. For the cell wall formation, the protoplasts will synthesize a wall within 24 hours and lose their spherical shape. However, for cereal and woody plants protoplast, it might take longer time to generate a cell wall. After that, it is followed by the cell division, callus formation, and plantlet regeneration. How we can visualize the efficiency of cell wall removal and also the determination, and also how to determine the protoplast viability. First, we can use the light microscope which is observing whether or not the protoplast have the spherical shape that show the complete enzymatic removal of cell wall. Or we can stain it with the staining reagent which are the calcophore white that produce the intense blue fluorescent and fluorescent brighter tinapole that produce the yellow fluorescent under UV examination that indicate the presence of the remaining cell walls. The viability can be detected by staining it with the fluorescein diacetate which is the FDA whereby the viable protoplast will produce a fluorescent green or yellow while the non-viable protoplast remain unstained. The number of viable protoplasts can be counted using the hemocytometer. However, the protoplast isolation and culture remains fundamental to gene transfer by fusion. This is because the genetic transformation mainly involving the agrobacterium or biolistic mediated gene transfer are much preferred. Don't forget to subscribe, share and turn on notification. Please like us at the Facebook page and also follow us at the Instagram. If you have any inquiries on collaboration, please email to plantastic.mind at gmail.com. This is not a sponsored video and I would like to share with every one of you the reference I used in this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.